but in surprises. Okay, uh, now uh, we're going to have nominations for the convention, uh, the, the caucus delegates and alternates, and if we have more than one nominee for any of these positions, then we'll do the same thing we did yesterday for our National Nominations Committee member. We will allow each candidate three aggregate minutes to either speak himself or herself or have someone speak on their behalf. And we will also draw for lot by lot to see who would go first. Any questions about any of that? Everybody understand the procedure? All right. In that case, the floor is open for nominations for the first of three national delegates to represent this caucus. Yes, ma'am. All right, Richard Hayes has been nominated. Uh, seconds are not necessary. But, uh, Richard, do you have, oh, excuse me, are there any other nominations? Matt? Peggy Healy. Peggy Healy has been nominated. Are there any other nominations? Dave? Thank you, but I respectfully withdraw. I do not wish to run against Richard Hayes. Thank you very much, Dave. I, I'd be happy to nominate another position. Yes, Madam Chairman. Yes, Richard. I will withdraw my name and yield you. I'll, I'll run for a different delegate position. I'll run for number three. Thank you, Richard. Is that all right with you? I'll put a nominee, Richard. Yes, yes. Okay, so at this point we have Peggy Healy nominated. And is there another, any other nomination? Thank Richard? You, yeah. Uh, yes, no Richard. Disrespect.
please join me in respect and appreciation to Renee for her service by casting your vote. Thank you. Pardon me for reading this because I'm very nervous. Um, uh, my name is Renee Stoltenberg and I am running to be your national delegate. I was appointed um, to serve on the platform committee this week. Um, I was appointed uh, thanks to uh, Dean McIver and David Halverson. And um, this was such an amazing um, process to me. We worked on this platform as a small subcommittee and then came together as a large group. And though we had our disagreements, um, we were able to come together. And uh, we, I believe that this platform, I believe in this platform, that this is a platform that we can be proud of as Texans. And I would like the opportunity to take forth this platform to the National Convention. I want to be able to hold our nominee to its planks. It's imperative that we send delegates to support our nominee and will not be contentious and divisive on the national stage. Um, in 2009, I made a decision to start the Town of Farmer Republicans. We started with just a few people, and we have grown in just these two years. Um, now people come to us for information on the County Republicans. Um, we have candidates that want to speak to our group, address our group, because we do have quite a few people that are um, involved, very heavily involved in the party. Um, we also instituted um, a great troops program while that was in effect. Um, I am the assistant treasurer for the Denton County Republican Party. Um, I filled in for Rudy for um, three weeks, and I also did all of the accounting for um, Lincoln Ray dinner this year. I'm a precinct chair. Um, I'm passionate about our party, and I've worked on numerous campaigns and official events. I am passionate about my family. I've been married to my husband Jim for 30 years. I homeschooled my four sons for 21 years. Um, if you didn't hear, you weren't arrested. Um, we adjourned our subcommittee meeting just in time on Monday night to, for me to get to my ninth grandchild being born. Um, I would ask that you would please vote today to elect a committed conservative, Renee Stoltenberg, to be your national delegate. It's our time to put our differences aside and unify behind our candidate in order to defeat the rock and roll.
Representative Mike Kerr, let me just uh, ask the candidates, because we have the vote going on, if they would please each appoint uh, one teller to go check those votes. Did you do that, Renee? Okay. And uh, Peggy, did you appoint the teller? Because we need to make sure that everybody's satisfied with the vote. All right. Yes, Kurt. Point of order. Please state your point. The chair would ask that even if there's not a rule against that, then perhaps we refrain from electioneering during the voting. Uh, I would suggest that if you all have any specific questions or anything of the candidates, to, to let's, let's just ask after each candidate has made his or her speech. Feel free to ask whatever you would like at that point. I'll allow some questions. How's that? Kirk, will that be all right?
Okay, I'll try to give the instructions more than once, if that would be helpful. Will that help things, I think? Men Lyle. Yeah. Okay, is there anyone who still has a ballot that hasn't been picked up? Okay. Is there a ballot up here? Is that what you have? All right. Do you, do you have a point of order or a point of information? What? That would be an excellent idea, sergeants. I would ask that you do that on the next round of voting. And again, anyone uh, who comes in while we are voting, uh, we won't have that problem. They'll have to wait till we're through. That's a good suggestion. Yes, sir. Well, I see a hat over here that I'll definitely use. We'll do that the next time, too. That's a very good suggestion. Okay, anyone who is not involved in the actual counting of those ballots, please take your seat. Roy, Reed, etc. If, you if you're not involved in the count, I would appreciate it if you would sit down. We've got a lot of confusion going on. Anybody that uh, is not, yes, Kitty? We'll, we'll enact them on the next round of voting, and I'll, I'll be clear with them then. Okay. okay, are all of you standing at the back involved in the in the count? Okay, very good, thank you. Tracy, you have your hand up. What do you, you need to put in order for your information? Thank you. Stage okay. four. Richard will be nominated. Okay. And I'm sorry. Excuse me. Could you all be quiet and let's hear Teresa's uh, inquiry? Absolutely. A person can be nominated as many as six times. Yeah. Seeing that happen, actually. Your point is well made. Is there any other delegate or seated alternate who did not get a ballot? Not sure. Okay. State your point. That is what should have happened. I apologize if, if that was not made clear. We'll go through the instructions again on the next round of balloting. Thank you for your support. Is Kurt Nelson still here? That was one of the uh, ca candidates for National Committee Man, and he was here for a minute. I'm sure he'll be back, and we'll let him speak in a minute. Yes, sir.
and William Batchelor, uh, Ohio State House Speaker, said, I think 25 to life would be a good start. <laughs> and unfortunately we have put one in the White House. So let's, let's get that joke out for sure. Okay, anybody else come prepared? Yes, sir, come on up. This one's quite appropriate. I'm sure you may have heard it before. After significant debate, they finally decided which stamp to put Barack Obama's picture on. The food stand. Don't anybody get excited. We're not waiting out the champagne. This is going to be in place of our pirate's hat. But thank you, Richard. We appreciate you. Yes, sir. So, uh, a Muslim, an illegal immigrant, and Barack Obama walk into a bar. And the bartender says, hello, Mr. President.
that you address that issue of who you were planning to vote for at the convention? Is that okay? Because we're not going to extend our time that way. Understand, and I agree with that. However, that suggestion is not made until just now. And the candidates have every right to ignore and not do that if they so choose. Rudy? Okay, let me say what Rudy is saying. On the first ballot, it is an automatic vote that will be announced based on the primary vote in Texas. However, you are asked as a national delegate or alternate which of the candidates you would like to be marked as supporting. If there are not enough votes on the first ballot to select a nominee, and I will just tell you there are at least 15 state delegations who are being challenged at the national convention. So we do not know at this point if there are enough votes for any nominee. So at that point, if under the Texas rules, on the second ballot, delegates are free to vote for whomever they'd like. Rudy, did that cover what you wanted me to say? Yes. Yes, sir, state your point. First of all, this is a well, we'll stop. Did you not say that you would have a great period of questions for each candidate after that? I, uh, we were talking about that, the, and the only way we could do that would be to extend the time limit that we would give each of them. I wish we could do that, but I believe the parliamentarians have advised me that we cannot uh, modify these rules. Is that right? So we can't extend the time limit. I, I wish we could, but I believe that uh, to stay within our rules, we have to stay within the three minutes. Now, if there should be a runoff and we decide as a body to have, because we are allowed, if we, do, if we have a runoff, then we have to decide in a runoff will we give them one minute, two minutes, or three minutes, and then at that point, uh, it would be appropriate for us to ask them to address that. Chris, I'm sorry, but I think that's the best we can do. Yes, sir.
very much. I appreciate your explanation. I've got to recognize the point of order first. Who's making the point of order, Steve? Point of bill taken, Steve. The point of information is to ask. One can always say, Madam Chairman, do you know that? <laughs> and, uh, yes, sir. Say your point. I thought the nominations had been closed because of no further nominations. I apologize. If we did not close nominations before we do anything else, we have to close nominations. Jay, I'm sorry, but I have to do that. I apologize. I really thought I'd ask for more nominations, and there were no more. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Hearing that, we now are closed again. Thank you for your point of order. And yes, sir, do you have a point of inquiry or a point of order? State your point, please. Sir, I'm sorry, that is out of order, that is important. That's actually a motion which is out of order at this time, it would be in order at another time once we've gotten through this round of voting, okay? Because our next... What, let me, let me, let me try something here a minute and see if the problem can allow me to do this. Is it the sense of the caucus that while these candidates are speaking during their three-minute aggregate time, that they tell us who they would be supporting if there is a second round of balloting? Is that the sense of the caucus? Yes, sir. Do I, do I have a point of order over here? Stand up and state your point, please. No, it is not changing the rules. Your point is not well taken. Let me explain why it is not changing the rules. What it is doing is simply giving these candidates the sense of the caucus. If they choose not to do that, it is up to them. They're not going to be sued. They're not going to be disqualified. They will not just simply not choose to do that. You have a point of order or a point of inquiry? Point of information. State your point. I'm sorry, there, I did not hear the last part of your question. Okay. Most of the candidates have passed out information and they're going to have people speaking on it here. I appreciate your inquiry, but I don't think that... that yes, uh, the question has been called. All those in favor of calling the question, please say, the question is being called. That means we're going to cut off this stuff we're going to get You're still going to hear the candidates speak? <coughs> She's calling for the vote. All those in favor of calling for the vote now, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hey. Well, I think the ayes have that. We want to hear the candidates speak. Jay, I'm sorry. Uh, we've called for the vote, so we have to do that now. I'm sorry. Before we do that, though, we have these... Um, Speakers coming up. First of all, we have to draw. There are three nominees. If you all will come forward, we're going to draw lots as to who is going to speak. And what are
No, no, no. Sir, I called for nominations three times and no other nominations were put forward. So that automatically closes nominations. So we don't have to vote to close. the sense of the, and we did that. I asked the sense of the, yes. Now, y'all, let's just try to be nice here. We asked the sense of the caucus as to whether or not you wanted to ask these candidates to give us that information in their three minutes. There were a million eyes and one or two no's. So that is the sense of the caucus. Again, they do not have to do it. That means they should. That doesn't mean they will. All we can do is ask that they do that. Okay. All right. Uh, unless we have a point of order. Yes, sir. Are you a point of order? Yes, sir. State your point. Yes, sir. I'm trying to get there. No. The question is being called to go to the speeches for these candidates, okay? And we've had a second on that. All in favor of calling the question so that we are moving away from this discussion and into hearing from the candidates, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, but the ayes have it. Yes, sir, state your point. There certainly was, a, it was a motion from Jean McIver and it was seconded from the floor. And we have just voted to call the question, you are out of order. I'm sorry, your point is not well taken. All right, let's move on now with our uh, people. Okay, number one, who was number one? Reed King, were you number one? And you have your speakers lined up? All right, uh, you will have your three minutes. And again, I would remind the candidates what the sense of the caucus is. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Richard Hayes, and I'm up here to uh, speak on behalf and nominate Reed King. When Reed first became active in the party, uh, he was like that yellow you know, hairy stuff around the corn cob that irritates everybody. And what I want to tell you that Reed has done is learn how to work in the system and work effectively. And I have come to admire his uh, leadership skills in that regard. He's been here all week long working on the Rules Committee and the Platform Committee. And let me tell you on Tuesday night in Platform, the right to life flights were gutted, and our platform representative, Leon Storms, got on the phone and started calling people. And we involved Reed, and we met with a lot of the leaders of the party on the right to life uh, issues, including Diane and Kathy Adams, and we put together an action plan. The action plan was number one, who were the people on the, on the subcommittee that were causing us problems? There's five, there were three, so three to vote. Who are the people on the platform committee that are causing problems? So we identified the problem. The second thing we did then is to identify who is out there that could run against these people so we could replace them when we went to permanent committees. That's why permanent committees are so important. And then we determined what our voting strengths were, and we put together an action plan. And as y'all know, all those planks were stored in the platform. So I wanted to thank him for doing that. And uh, he's growing the party. He's bringing in new people, and he's integrating them in the party, and I wholeheartedly support him. Yeah. 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 Reed King and I don't always agree on everything, and we're not always going to agree, but I know his heart. I know that he's helping to bring new people who want to be Republicans, who want to give energy to the party, and those people have been here all week. They've been busting their butt, and I think all of us need to take um, advice from them, and I think we all need to follow their actions, because if we were all as engaged as some of the folks that Reed's brought in to be Republicans, we'd have a strong party.
we got videotape being allowed in that platform committee. That's why all of that reverted back to 2010, because they would not go on record as taking and stripping that stuff out. That was our fight, and I'm gonna say the words because you know it's there. Those were the Ron Paul delegates that were here that put that back into place. We are Republicans, we're there. I will support my pledges and my oaths that I take. I'm a Christian, homeschooled father of six, and I ask for your vote.
I am your ambassador. I would be your representative. And I would represent the candidate that won Texas, because this, after all, is a Texas Democrat.